let's go ahead, get ahead, ahead and get started. I had um, two main questions I wanted to ask. Unfortunately, we didn't get the notes included from our, oh no, we did. Yeah, from the call um, last time, which is um, discussion of uh, heat and Tosca um, regarding cloud native network functions. Um, but before we dive in, can I just check here? So, uh, Lay, I appreciate you joining from uh, Huawei, Sweden. Uh, interesting that we're not getting anyone from China this time. And um, Leif, is this the first call you participated in? Yes, that's correct. Mm -hmm. uh, so oh, that's why. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, welcome. Can you tell me about uh, Cinch.com? Uh, yeah, so so uh, we provide messaging solutions. We have like a two-sided business model. We are uh, like one of the largest aggregators, but we also provide like infrastructure towards operator from early then in the messaging within SMS, MMS, or CS, but operate software to operators. Um, great. Uh, and um, so I, I guess I, I would, um, Oh, we have a few more folks on now. Could I just ask everyone to please enter your info in this um, Google Doc um, to uh, sign in for the call? So uh, I would love to just have um, a short discussion um, on uh, the concept of uh, conformance for CNFs. So um, I've been beginning the conversations with um, LF Networking and um, CNTT about their plans. And with VNFs, they are essentially um, demonstrating software conformance against either heat or Tosca templates. Um, but uh, my impression is that the heat part definitely doesn't make sense for CNFs. And even uh, Tosca is a little unclear um, whether there's a, a fit there or not. And so I guess I would love to hear from um, anybody on the call, and uh, maybe Robbie would be willing to speak up first um, on the question of um, your thoughts on CNFs with Vodafone and how um, you're looking at going about uh, conformance, uh, demonstrating that they um, work correctly and then also how they will interwork with other parts of your network. Thank you, Don. Um, yes, so uh, CNF is uh, conformance specifically. Uh, I think Tosca is being uh, chosen in Vodafone as the language for service description. Uh, and we, this is why uh, in LFN, if you look at the OPP program. I, I'm sorry, Robbie, you said Tosca has? Yes, Tosca. Okay. Uh, yeah, so so if we try to apply this to the CNFs, it might not make sense. It might make sense. It depends how really this is being defined. So uh, Tosca as a as a language, it could sit on top of uh, other description language like Helm chart, for example. It does not have to be pure Tosca to be able to define a service that is composed from CNFs uh, uh, as only Tosca language. So it could be any language underneath, but Tosca will be the umbrella language that will define the overall service end to end. And the individual components, they could be uh, other languages. This is one way of doing it. Uh, the other way is go natively Tosca. So everything is just defined as Tosca uh, from uh, the get go. And that will make it simpler really to, comp uh, to, to perform compliance testing. Uh, and that will make it more compatible with the way we work in OVP. Now, as Vodafone, I don't think we have a strong opinion for now what, how CNF should be presented, since, uh, since this is, is still, uh, we're trying to figure out really the right way to do that. But I think within this forum, it will be good to understand what would be the, the best architectural decision to take in terms of uh, supporting uh, conformance testing and which way to go. Um, okay, great. Uh, I appreciate that um, feedback. Would uh, anybody else be willing to share an opinion? Um, Raymond, I, I don't know that you've joined a call before. Uh, I'd love to have you introduce yourself as well. Hi, yeah, sorry. Uh, 
sorry, yeah, I haven't joined the call before. Um, so I'm from Expo. Uh, we do test and measurement um, software and hardware for, for telcos. Um, we actually found out about your tel telecom user group at the recent uh, KubeCon. Um, so myself and my chief architect, uh, Alex de Vigori, have been trying to get a little bit more active with the with the tug. So we're just at the moment in very much observer mode, just trying to figure out exactly what's what's going on and what's happening. But uh, yeah, we're trying to uh, just see how we can fit in and how we can um, hopefully contribute to uh, building a better community. Great, we're glad to have you. Um, I guess I would ask, have you, um, you were at KubeCon in San Diego, have you looked at the process of containerizing some of your um, current uh, network functions? Yeah, so um, I think we're less, in terms of actually building network function stuff, I think we're building less network functions as sort of in a post network function, um, service assurance space but uh yes there is a lot of work going internally to uh to containerize a lot of our stuff um we i keep telling the nfv guys that yes we need to be more container happy but um we do have at least one group that is working on um containerization of a lot of stuff um so yeah there is there is definitely some some work going internally and as well as the fact that we have fairly recently sort of tried to shift our architectural focus on um, heading into a cloud native world. Uh, great, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. And that, that is sort of the, the point of this group. Um, so uh, let me um, open it up for uh, anyone else then. Uh, I, I would love a question, um, have any of the rest of you, and, and um, worked on uh, Tosca uh, in terms of using that with a Helm chart? I personally uh, have not used that, but we're looking at uh, reading some papers and articles. It seemed to me a very powerful way of doing it because you could mix uh, not just CNFs, you could mix other uh, technologies like PNFs, for example, within the service definition or even BNFs. And that makes it more uh, flexible in, in that way. Uh, personally, I have not used it directly with CNFs. We used it with BNF in Vodafone. Uh, but mm -hmm. the, all the evidence shows that it provides some more flexibility uh, in, in definition of the network. Are you going to be in um, uh, at RA2 at the CNTT meeting in January yes. in Prague? Yes, I will be there. Uh, can I ask if anybody else on the call is planning on going? Yeah, Leif, I will probably also join in, in coming from Cinch. Great. And I, I know that um, they're planning to begin to um, come up with a um, plan for CNF conformance, but um, you don't have any more insight into uh, what the plan is at that, uh, what's likely to occur at that meeting, do you? Well, I, I do actually because myself and Mark Price from uh, Maxis are we we organizing that meeting. Uh, so the plan is oh, really to, yeah, the plan is in Prague to get together. Uh, Jim Baker he's setting up a session that we can uh, sit together and do some brainstorming. Uh, we would like to uh, have as many tug people as possible uh, contributing into the discussion. We know we have a lot of the RA2 folks from CNTT will be actively part of that discussion. Uh, but yeah, this is the plan kind of trying to think about it in there and see what would be the general direction of the community feel like. And this is something we could report back to the tug here after the discussion that happens in the prior. Yeah, do you know uh, Manoj Nair from Netcracker? No. I uh, he has a um, document. I'm not going to share it now, but I have encouraged him to um, post it into the uh, the Tug Slack channel, talking about current approaches for uh, CNF modeling. And he's looked at um, a variety of, of uh, different scenarios of how you can use uh, Tosca types 
um, or uh, a Tosca a Kubernetes profile. But I, I'm just um, a little unclear whether any of those have uh, kind of traction right now or are uh, going to be the preferred way forward. Yeah, I have not I have not seen the documentation, unfortunately. I will look for it. Yeah, um, so hopefully that will occur in this Slack channel in the next couple of days or we could have a set okay. of conversations uh, there around it. He had just given me an advanced copy, but I don't want to paste it in without his um, – is okay. Um, so I, I guess I, I would just check again with this group. Is there anyone else who um, would be interested in sharing an opinion on that uh, question on um, uh, CNF uh, modeling and, and conformance and uh, yeah. any alternative opinions? Um, yeah, I, uh, I wonder if uh, that uh, this uh, group has uh, just uh, want to pay more attention with the uh, CNTT or because uh, I, I think uh, we have more uh, discussions than before on the CNTT's uh, progress now, right? Uh, Lay, say a little bit more, please. Yeah, uh, I mean, um, uh, for, uh, for this talk uh, meeting, uh, I think we, we are currently uh, talking about uh, um, more uh, and more uh, stuff around uh, the CNTT's work. Like uh, the same of uh, the modeling, the, the maybe the same uh, testing also, sorry, maybe the, um, the definition of uh, those templates, something like that. So you it's like we are we're, we're going to like uh, more uh, cooperate with those uh, CNTT uh, activities. Yeah, it, it's a, a little bit up in the air to be honest. Uh, I mean, we're we're uh, we're definitely interested in collaborating with um, CNTT. I, I think the 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 key question um, is uh, that, that CNTT has been very VNF focused. Um, to date, mm -hmm. and so it's it's just not um, clear yet for a model on um, uh, how that would work with CNFs. So just a comment on actually uh, in CNTT we do have a whole reference architecture focusing into cloud native. So we do have two tracks. One of them is completely to your point VNFs, and the other is is uh, a CNF focus. So the only thing they talk about in there is CNF and cloud native. Well, so Robbie, I mean, I, I might have missed it, but w when I last looked at the RA2 documents about that second track, there wasn't um, really uh, any information there yet. Uh, yeah, because it started after uh, Antwerp. So uh, now we do have uh, at least the first three chapters uh, drafted and that talk about the model and the approach taken to use Kubernetes to run uh, cloud network functions. So I'm not sure what, what when was the last time you, you looked at it, but uh, there's yeah. been a lot so of I'm work just, happening. Yeah. I'm just pasting a link in sure. um, to, uh, and, and I, I think it was Antwerp was the last place that I looked. Um, so I, I, I guess, um, which of the chapters here um, would you say most of the work has taken place in? So it would be like chapter three, the high level architecture? Uh, yes, so uh, chapter two has just finished the requirements and chapter three and four where the focus currently is on. Just looking at it from high level and then going into the component level uh, specifics for the such an uh, architecture. And if you look at chapter three, there is more information than chapter four at the moment because of nature of it. Chapter one discusses the approach that will be taken uh, to do that and will be useful really to look at what will be the, uh, the approach in terms of multi-clusters, how do we deal with the life cycle management of, it, of uh, a cluster itself and what the operation model will look like. Right, so I, I definitely see more material here. Um, right now, it looks more descriptive of um, how the um, Kubernetes uh, manages uh, environments and and, and such. Um, I, I'm not seeing yet a discussion um, 
for example, around um, Helm. Uh, yeah, so for like 4.8, you say the reference architecture must support the usage of Kubernetes application package manager using the Kubernetes APIs like Helm v3. Um, so I, I'm, I'm glad to see the reference to Helm v3, but I don't quite see the details here about how um, you, uh, so I, I'm, I'm particularly focused on this conformance question, um, which I guess does seem like one of the most important outputs of, uh, uh, of the RA2 work. Absolutely. So uh, if you look at uh, the way CNTT really position itself is looking at the infrastructure layer more than maybe the orchestration layer. Now, uh -huh. having said that, having said that, one of the things that will keep coming up is how do we help within CNTT specifying requirements to assist uh, programs like OVP phase two or OVP phase one to do the compliance certification program. Now, although we in CNTT, we said this is not something we're gonna directly cover because it's, in our view, this orchestration kind of level. But uh, as with the, we start looking at uh, OVP phase two with the CNTT tug group, the hope is really to collaboratively come up with a way to move forward. So I'm not expecting CNTT to, to specify in details what would be the right mode of, uh, is it Tosca or is it Helm or is it a combination of both? Uh, we're hoping that collaboratively we can figure something together and that will be driven by the waiver verification program at the tug and with the LFN we'll come up with. Okay, I mean, I, I guess I'd love to get your current thinking on it. Um, I, I, let me just go ahead and, and share um, a little bit of, um, of, of my thinking on the subject. So there's a, um, a, a project that CNCF has been investing in called um, API Snoop. And um, I, just, just to be clear, I'm going to give you a quick overview um, of this, but I have slides that I'm working on to um, walk through this process in detail and, um, and, and provide a lot more context for it. But um, what it does is use the um, audit logs in Kubernetes to um, evaluate an application that's running and look at every Kubernetes API call that it's making. And then um, it, it's able to classify all of those and say, okay, there's these stable APIs and these beta APIs and these alpha APIs. Um, and so the, the user interface I pasted it into Zoom is um, admittedly a little um, confusing for this use case because it's, it, it's currently being used um, more for a different use case, which is trying to look at uh, the other side of, of certification, the, the platform side, and looking at um, which of the APIs are not being covered by the current tests. But the same software infrastructure um, could also essentially be used to look at a CNF and say, okay, does the CNF only um, use uh, publicly accessible APIs and um, what version of Kubernetes uh, would be needed in order to support the necessary APIs at the stable or the beta level? Yes, actually, I like that. I just looked at the, the web page. I think this is certainly one of the things that can be leveraged a lot in the conformance verification program. I, I do, I do, I do feel there is different level of verification needed. One of them is the conformance compliance to just Tosca or Heat or whatever data format we we decide to test against, and that will be just compliance. That means like offline testing, and then there will be the validation testing, which is the second category in my view which is looking at the APIs. And one of the things that important for CNTT is to make sure that all CNFs using the same APIs. So this kind of tooling will help us a lot really identifying is if a, if a given CNF is really using the APIs that we standardize as CNTT moving forward. And the third level would be the performance. And I do imagine things like testbed project, for example, which is trying mainly focusing on the performance can also fit into that verification program to deliver that performance metric, metric and measurements that needed to start uh, also defining how the characterization of that CNF will be within the, the accepted range of CNTT. But yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. Great. And, and I would just mention, Robbie, that uh, um, 
the API Snoop project is entirely open source. And so, um, as I said, it's not, not quite set up for what's needed yet, but it, it's something that I think could be pretty easily adapted to it. Um, it, it also kind of follows the model of the current Kubernetes certification, um, where, which is a, um, a self-certification that, that any uh, organization can run, but then it can be validated by uh, third parties to ensure that Kubernetes platforms um, are actually uh, conformant the way they're supposed to be. Um, and, and the other side of that is, um, it, so we haven't actually done that for the application side, um, but uh, there, there's certainly a scenario where you could use API Snoop to do so. Um, I might, uh, call on Watson for a minute. Watson, I appreciate you being willing to wake up so early to do this call. Is there, um, anything that you might add so, so far into the conversation about API Snoop and, um, uh, Tosca and such? Um, yeah, as far as API Snoop, yeah, I, I think I would recommend, um, it's like what you said, as far as, trying to maybe validate the use of APIs as Kubernetes. And um, it's interesting when we're talking about the different, um, let's say, I don't know, problems between maybe the vendors and service providers and the whole idea of should we fork Kubernetes and all this, um, um, those issues that would come up from that, trying to make it to where we're all having some kind of like a fair place to where vendors can make and collaborate their their CNFs and try to avoid some of the maybe some of the issues there. Um, APIs and it seems like it could help to contribute there. Um, and um, I think things like that. I, there's so many um, problems or ways to describe how the different vendors collaborate um, like if you were to say um, take say the Etsy standards and all the different standards that we if we try to make to ensure that everyone plays nice with each other even though they might have closed source offerings and things like that it seems it comes back to making sure that APIs are strong and um, validating each other so API Snoop I think would would help with that with Kubernetes. Yeah, I'll just make the point that API Snoop itself is open source, but uh, it definitely works completely against a closed source CNF. Uh, mm -hmm. There's no need, so it, it, it's a runtime application API checker, so there's no need for the, the source code, the CNF to be open source. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so I, I guess the, the question I might ask for, for Robbie and, and also uh, Lay and, and anyone else um, on the call who has an opinion is, is how you do see, um, let's say that um, we have a CNF and it's installed via a Helm V3 uh, chart um, and uh, it, it's doing something like the, the uh, broadband network gateway or, or, or some kind of uh, routing of traffic or firewall or, or something like that. I, I'm curious your view on how that is interacting with the existing MANO platforms um, that that operators are using today. Uh, do you, I guess, Robbie, as, as you've looked at this work, do you see it occurring um, as orchestrated by uh, ONAP or or or? Um, what are you seeing as, as kind of the, um, I think it would be southbound connections, but I, I'm not sure that's the right metaphor. Uh, yes, uh, to be fair, I think ONAB is, uh, is an orchestration platform. If you look at Kubernetes, it has some orchestration capabilities, but I don't think uh, the capabilities that are covered by Kubernetes at the moment is equivalent to what we, the flexibility we have within ONAB. Uh, so, as, Just as, to interrupt as, for a second, I, I find that the fact that ONAP and Kubernetes both describe themselves as orchestrators, very confusing. 
Yeah, uh, it is. And, and this is what the part of the confusion of the answer I'm going to give you in a minute, which is it's not clear yet exactly what role Kubernetes will play uh, in the existence of ONAP. And I, we do feel ONAP is still important in the CNF world. And having the way to, to have a southbound, to your point, from ONAP to a Kubernetes platform to orchestrate uh, CNFs, is, is really important. Now, how they will end up really implemented in real life, this is still to be seen and explored. I don't think we do have a clear answer, even within uh, CNTT itself, to what's the recommended way of doing that. This is something we would like to uh, also uh, highlight, and we did highlight it as a gap in the industry, trying to figure out really what would be the relationship between uh, Kubernetes and ONA moving forward. Now, if we look at it in from different different approach, if we look at it, look at Kubernetes as standalone uh, platform to starting with, and then think about how do we hook it up into ONAP, what benefit do we get by use, hooking up to ONAP? I think this is the way we start to look at it. If we just forget about ONAP for a second and then look at it from pure cloud native concept, and then when we start to think about services, I'm sure ONAP will have more important role to play there. It's not clear to me at the moment how would that play out, to be fair. Okay. I mean, I, I, I was hoping you would you would say, yes, here, I, it is clear to me, and here's how it's going to work. <laughs> yeah, I hope that too. <laughs> <laughs> um, Lay, would you like to uh, speak up on that question of ONAP and, and CNF connections? Oh, well, I um, actually, I think uh, we have been uh, working on the ONAP for this uh, thing app, uh, for a while that um, we actually, we, we, uh, we uh, recommend the, the way that they are currently uh, moving forward to the containerized uh, working node. They uh, try to uh, using this, um, how to say, the thing app, uh, to treat it as the artifact to inside the, you know, the whole existing uh, uh, lifecycle management so that they can uh, directly adopt uh, the current uh, uh, Kubernetes way or the, how to say, the Helm uh, way to, to, uh, provision, uh, to provision those uh, CNFs. So that's, uh, that's uh, I think that's uh, the, what they are currently doing. And, uh, they actually uh, in uh, our um, our uh, internal uh, implementation, we uh, we actually using you know many not only the helm but also uh, the the Tosca, the heat, but even even the actually uh, we even uh, developed our own version uh, of uh, the Tosca to uh, to help our product because uh, we still think. Uh, they are not good enough to uh, to fit for our uh, special uh, requirements. So, uh, but also, uh, I think uh, the helm is uh, is good enough uh, for maybe uh, some general uh, purpose uh, application. But for the telecom applications, there are still some uh, requirements there cannot be met. So. Um, we still need to uh, to investigate uh, on the helm to see if uh, everything can be done uh, via the helm. But I guess uh, the, our policy is uh, is just uh, become uh, more and more open. So um, we uh, we are trying to uh, transit to 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 using the helm, but um, still uh, I guess uh, need some time to. Uh, to make it more, uh, how to say, to meet uh, the uh, every requirements from the product. So that's, uh, that's not an easy thing. So it's a still ongoing uh, progress. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Could I appreciate that, that feedback? Could I call on, um, on Michael Peterson for a second? Michael, would you be willing to uh, tell us what we should be doing here? Um, yeah, I think it's 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 a tough tough I guess discussion and decision to make. So I'm honestly not really sure at this point what would be the right approach forward. 
Uh, yeah, that's a recurring theme here uh, <laughs> on the call today. Uh, yeah. But any, any views on, um, I, I, I mean, have you worked with Tosca much in the past? Um, no, I briefly looked into it. I think it was a few years ago. Otherwise, I haven't really used it much, to be honest. Um, and uh, the work you've been doing in the CNF testbed, you haven't yet been um, trying to package up in Helm charts, correct? You've been more focused on getting the actual installations correct, just doing it manually. Uh, we've, we've, we've actually created quite a few Helm charts at this point to try and try and shift away from, from running everything using a, a mixture of Ansible and, and just shell scripts. So, so a lot of the examples we have now are actually based on, on Helm charts. Great. Okay. But yeah, you know, whether it's all working on, on Helm or not, the, the, the goal is to get there. Well, I guess yeah. there's still yeah. um, a bunch of out of band things that you're having to configure ahead of time. Of course, of course. Um, although I guess even there, you, your aim is to have some of that work containerized and running that it would, would run uh, on the node to set things up first, correct? Um, I think that would definitely be the end goal. Um, again, having everything in, in, in like a modular fashion that also makes it a lot easier to, to do custom deployments or do modified deployments without having to, to redo everything. So, so again, having building blocks to, to set up what you're planning to use should definitely be, be one of our end goals. But at this point, we're not really there. Um, we did some updates to, I guess, just the Kubernetes deployment recently, where we've tried splitting that up into to hardware provisioning and then the, the software stack of Kubernetes provisioning on top of that one. Um, but but I guess that's it, it's on the to-do for, for 2020, that's for sure. Okay. Hey, Robbie, could I ask you one more question before you have to depart? Sure, yeah. Um, I, it was uh, the, the CNF definition question. Um, yeah. Where, um, can you point me in where in the CNTT work, um, I, I, I presume you're referencing the Etsy specs, in order to define a, a VNF. Um, but I, I, I'm curious if you have worked on a definition of a CNF. Uh, actually, I, I, is within the CNTT, what we did, we referred to the definition that had been defined by the TUG group. Um, so this uh, is That's where, very nice yeah. of you, but I, I don't know <laughs> that we have the best definition yet in the, in the white paper. Yeah, so I, I've been in a few calls in, within the talk group to define that. I don't think we still got to a conclusion, but within CNTT, we, we thought uh, this is where the right way of defining it, not within CNTT itself, within the talk group. So, yeah, we did not really define it in CNTT. We were relying on others to define it for us. Okay, because I think we were still having a debate, uh, and I know we were still having a, a debate within the talk group on, um, I, I think they were at version nine or something on the white paper in uh, definitions. Um, I just pasted and, and, uh, I just pasted the link actually. If you look at the section on the document, it's, yes, it, yeah. Well, no, that's the um, that's the cloud native definition, which is great. Um, and that one, I think there is uniformity on, and and people find that useful. Um, but it specifically for the definition of a CNF, yeah. I think was a little less. Yeah, um, I mean, if you scroll down a little there's bit, there's less consensus uh, on. I agree. If you scroll down a little bit, it said the CNF talk is also working on a set of cloud native principle and CNF definition. So this is where we really added the talk link uh, to there. And hopefully, once that finalized, we can just copy and paste it here. Yes. So, okay. So I, I do appreciate the, the site by reference. and, and um, but it, of course, it means that the tug group actually does need to, to come to consensus on that definition. Um, those were most of the areas that I was looking to cover today. Would, is there anybody else um, on the call who would like to, to voice an opinion? And, and Robbie, I, I understand you have to go now, but thank you for, for joining the conversation. Um, that uh, would, would like to share an opinion on any of these issues? Yeah, uh, I still uh, just wonder uh, why would uh, why we wanted to understand uh, the the usage of this uh, Helm or uh, the Tosca or something like that. The the purpose of this uh, this discussion. 
I just don't do well, the, 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 and, What was driving it is that um, CNTT is going to be moving forward very likely with the OVP, the Verification and, and Compliance Program. And so yeah. um, I, trying to understand how that program would work about how you would be able to demonstrate um, CNFs as, as being conformant. Um, but uh, I, I, I definitely don't think we have a, a consensus there. I, as I said, I, I am going to uh, put together um, uh, some details about API Snoop and talking about how that could be used to show um, the conformance of specific Helm charts. But that doesn't speak about um, how to show uh, interoperability with uh, Mano systems. Right. So uh, actually, it's a kind of uh, like um, we are going to use the OMP to uh, to certificate the CNF or what? I, I guess they haven't figured it out, but but I, I think the natural thing that they're looking at is what is the smallest changes they could make to the the VNF tools that would allow them to certify CNFs as well. Then the, what about uh, the CNF test bed? So what's the relationship uh, between the same tab that we're in the, the OAP? Yeah, so today there's none. I mean, we've certainly talked about using the test bed to uh, run CNFs and um, demonstrate that they do work. The, the question is just um, uh, that it's not set up for that today in any sort of automated way. And so, I mean, one of the advantages of API Snoop is that it doesn't need uh, the same level of of infrastructure and set up to, to spin things up and demonstrate it. Um, I guess Michael okay. or, or, or Watson, would you, either of you want to make a comment about the CNF testbed and using that for certification? Uh, actually, I guess if we are going to do something like that, we, we'd better to set up, you know, like some uh, relationship or mappings to that uh, can de uh, describe those relationships because uh, it's a little bit confusing, uh, you know, there's so many uh, programs there. Oh, I totally agree. And I, I mean, I think it's, yeah. it's problematic. So we, we definitely need to um, have clarity here for um, vendors, particularly for vendors who are just getting started in this space and trying to come up to speed, um, that uh, we would like to have a simple story for them about what the process is to get certified. And um, yeah. as far as the CNF uh, test bed, uh, yes, it's a bit to set up still for um, the vendors and service providers. Also, another thing um, that we're working on is how the, the output is is uh, viewed. So uh, something a bit nicer for, for people to consume on what's valid and what has been validated or what conforms and what doesn't, so. Yeah, I mean, let, let me just make a quick statement on that, which is that one of the huge strengths of the current um, Kubernetes conformance program is that it is a self-testing framework and it, it doesn't require very many resources to run. So essentially any Kubernetes vendor out there who's created their own implementation uh, can just uh, run Sonobuoy um, or, or there's other ways, other test harnesses, but a, a relatively simple container and uh, run through this whole test and within half an hour or so get a detailed log showing uh, where they pass or fail on everything. And um, where um, the test bed uh, Michael or Watson, how many servers is it right now? It's like four, and it it takes quite a while to to spin up and have everything get configured, just on the Kubernetes side. I think the Kubernetes side right now we use two servers, one for for running as a master, a small server for the master, and then we have a, a bigger server running as um, as the worker node. Um, okay, but so the, my my only point is they're the quite substantial. Um, it can be. It can be. I think uh, at this point it, it's it's manageable, but but there are definitely plans to scale it up and have some some um, bigger clusters and some cross server communication going on um, in the cluster as well. Okay. So I guess I, I would be curious on um, your thoughts then on a on a conformance program. I mean, it, it seems like there's at least three things that we're discussing here, where uh, something like a Tosca template 
could be um, essentially entirely a static analysis ahead of time to just look at that 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 it, um, template is is conformant and and um, parses correctly, and then you have uh, the runtime analysis that you could do with API Snoop of looking at what API calls are actually being made, and then you do have the test bed that you could look at. Uh, some performance analysis and look at um, the ability to actually move meaningful amounts of traffic. Yeah, um, and I think I think all three um, approaches should should be considered, and it's something that I think we should aim for. Um, at this point, we 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 have some some performance testing in place, and I think that's still being worked on. Um, and I think we're not really at the point yet where it 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 makes much sense to try and take into conformance testing on, on both the, the templates and the, the runtime, but it's, it's something that should be considered when we get to the point where, where um, we, we start having developers actually deploying and testing on, on the CNF test bit, then, then we should definitely figure something, at least a, a bare minimum in place to begin with. And then of course it's, it's something that can be scaled up afterwards. Yeah. Um... So, uh, Watson, could I give you the last word here? Anything that you would add? Mm, yeah, I, again, as far as the, the test bed, um, I think it's, it's important for, obviously, for us to get it working easier for people to install. One of the things, obviously, is it's a little bit uh, different than maybe the other conformance tests because you need smart mix. There, there's hardware involved, that kind of thing. And, maybe in the future, even ASICs and stuff like that. So that's where it kind of comes a little bit more difficult. And again, we need to make it a bit easier to consume the results um, that since people are a bit confused about, about that part. So. I'm yeah, I, I, I definitely agree. Um, okay. Would anyone else like to comment uh, or, or any other feedback on the meeting? I, um, I, I definitely am the one taking an action item here on um, trying to document a few of these questions um, in more detail. Okay, last chance, and then I'm going to end the call. Uh, really do appreciate everybody joining today um, at this awkward time, particularly you, Watson. I think it's 5.45 a.m. where you are. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> So uh, we will look at uh, whether we want to move this an hour back for, uh, for January. But um, appreciate the call and uh, happy holidays. Uh, thank you very much. Yes, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.